It's, it's a yeah. fucking cloud. It's going. It's going. Where do you think? It's like my friend. I literally had a friend in Philly. Like, oh, haha. I'm like, get fucking ready, bitch. <laughs> yeah. Like, we get fucking prepared to get fucking rocked by this cloud. We start with "In the Air Tonight" by Phil Collins. I was thinking about an air song too. I was like, "In the air." Welcome to the Joystick Show, episode 145. Uh, that was pretty hype. I'm not gonna lie. That was pretty <laughs> hype. Thanks, thanks for the the support on that one. It's a, to... it's a pleasure to be here. It's a pleasure to be here hanging out with you. I don't know who you are specifically, but I, I'm glad that you're here. You're hanging out with us. We're gonna be talking uh, talking some shiznit. Yeah. As yeah. Uh, as the 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 kiznits say. Yeah. Uh, we're gonna be uh, we're gonna be hanging out. We got a lot of stuff to talk about. For once, I feel like this is finally my time to shine in terms of topics. Yeah. <laughs> you're coming but here with them. I'm the coming in hot. I got ch- ch- coming in hot. He's got chapters now. Yeah. Chapters. You've, I mean, okay. we've had chapters for a bit. Yeah, I but 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 like actual like. <laughs> oh, before we get yeah. into anything, it'd be real helpful if you could subscribe to the Team Joystick YouTube channel and if you could like this episode of the Joystick Show. Maybe. And. Uh, no, sh- Damn it, now they're not gonna. <laughs> I put the doubt in their head. This, this, this gig is hard enough as it is. Mm-hmm. And then you gotta come and you gotta rain on my parade. Perhaps. Shit. On the Puerto Rican Day Parade Day. Word. Shit. It, it was gonna rain, but it didn't. You could have rained on any parade and you rained on no, this no. one. You're a fucking racist, dude. I am. <laughs> You're outnumbered, bro. This is like... I was even at the Caribbean Parade. I was, I was rocking out, you know? <laughs> Fucking, uh, like I said, lots of stuff to talk about. Mm-hmm. Real quick, not really part of anything. I'll leave a part of the intro. I was just going to say, because you mentioned the chapters thing. I recently ran out of space in my editing notebook, mm. and I started taking notes all the way back from episode 50 of the Joystick Show. Nice. And it was kind of crazy to flip through all those notes of just like chat things, we've oh, wow. topics we've talked about. Like I literally Shit. have all of that recorded. Mm-hmm. Like you could name any episode and I could tell you literally everything we mentioned. An encyclopedia of joystick. It's, it's, it's crazy, yeah. So. Uh, we need to create the online wiki. Uh, there's joystick lost <laughs> media already. Oh, yeah. Like there's a uh, lot of joystick lost media. You know it. So I feel like uh, years from now, people need to really hunt for those things because they won't. I, this is probably unrelated. You said wiki. Do we have a wiki page? Not yet. <laughs> That's the dream, right? But there. we could just dream, make right. one, can't we? Like, I think we could. Uh, we could. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you have to like, pay for like page. the like the run the website. Okay. Or you do like fandom or like Liquipedia yeah. or something. Okay. Guys, I'm gonna put up a donation link. Help us get a Wikipedia link, yeah. <laughs> please. <laughs> Our only goal. We don't want even. Yeah. A, I'd gonna... actually. Well, actually, what will happen is Wikipedia will call us irrelevant, and then we'll get sad. Yeah. <laughs> They'll be like, "We need money. We so need to do something of worth money. before." Yeah, you know, yeah. And then somebody does it for us. I, yeah. I think I have it. I recently um applied for a job at Barstool. Oh, okay. So I feel like I should uh, punch Dave Portnoy oh, yeah. directly in the nuts. There you go. And then now we're known as the podcast who one of them punched Dave Portnoy yeah. in the nuts. Mm-hmm. Our successes, yeah. our talent, nothing. It'll just be like, this podcast <laughs> is known as to you by this. co-host <laughs> Dylan Diaz punched David Portnoy <laughs> in the groin. Twice. <laughs> well, let's go. I knew that needs, needs to happen. And, uh, you know, get ready for some fun joystick stuff. We had a good talk before this one of where we, where we want to take things, things we already do, things we're going to start doing again. But it's going to be a fun time. Mm-hmm. We just want to make – we just want to have funnies. We want to look back on the videos. I think that's the fun thing for me. It's just like we, we're encapsulating memories. And they just so happen to be very high quality and funny at the yeah. same time. That's, that's my fault. But mm-hmm. it, it's cool nonetheless. I, I, it's always fun to go back and look at the old stuff on joystick. And, it, it's almost weird. Like I forget that we're the people that made that. Yeah, it's yeah. us. Like I it's know that, mm-hmm. but it's like we, we don't use that equipment anymore. That was when this was different, and that you know, it's like so. Imagine if we strange. were like an actual like content farm, and we had like hundreds of thousands of <laughs> like, fucking videos. Yeah. We'd be oh, like, "What sheesh. the fuck are we doing?" But anyway, lots of stuff that I want to talk about, and I yeah. think that the fact that Dylan said the term "content farm" is a yes. great way to start this. Okay. Holy shit. The streaming world is ablaze. It is just on fire. Yeah, it is the greatest thing I've ever seen. I, everything is it's it's one. It's just incredible. It's right? not just like oh that guy got like canceled and then that was it. It's like an ongoing thing. There's a multiple couple people yeah, there's are a, there's jumping a, there's in. There's a lot of stuff going on. And also, this I'm, is like everyone's yeah. fight. And also, ticking time bomb for sure. I mean, like Twitch <laughs> has been in this position for years. Yeah, where they've they've been making like decisions, terrible choices, banning people advertising stuff not banning people it was just yeah. like 
for a while their PR has been going downhill a little yeah. bit, and I now I think this was really. So well. I wanted to start. This was the iceberg because this was the beginning of it all. Yeah. This was when Twitch laid out their new like terms and guidelines, and everybody read them, and they were like, "What the fuck is Twitch?" Doing? Which this is a thing that I believe it was like uh, it happened for everyone on like June first. Like if you download any app, you will get a thing. It's like, hey, we have a new terms of service. Like every company and app yeah. had to make a new terms of service mm-hmm. so fucking wow. yeah twitch was i don't know all of the changes that they made but some interesting ones is i think like i don't know if the specifics of it but now streamers aren't allowed to take certain advertisements or things like yeah. that what there's limits on that there's limits now on top of that uh there's like weird stuff where if you want if you're a twitch partner or affiliate and you want to leave twitch you actually have to pay a fee you have to pay like twenty five dollars to leave and stream what? on another plat. Like, yeah, it's just, you got to pay a buyout. Yeah, it's That's weird annoying. shit like that, and everybody is like, "What the fuck is Twitch doing?" Like, so immediately Twitch had to make a statement where they were like, "A lot of stuff got misconstrued. We're gonna change stuff, right?" But <laughs> no, not construed. One person in specific who's fucking super pissed off about it is Ninja. Ninja. And I think that's kind of funny because I feel like if there's one person who's kind of synonymous with streaming, right. yeah. it's so Ninja. Him. The Mount, the Mount Rushm- Rushmore of Twitch. Yeah, for yeah, sure. The, 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 right. standing, the standing desk. And, the, and, the don't get, and don't worry, we're going to get to the other heads on that fucking Rushmore yeah, in a yeah, second. Yeah, yeah, but right yeah, now yeah. We're, we're talking about Ninja here. Ninja. And fucking, like, if you to think about it, Ninja's actually, like, I, I like him or not, you got to give him credit. Dude's been streaming since Justin.tv, right. since before Word. it was Twitch. So this guy is like a pioneer of the game. And if, like he's really smart because he really like fucking he, he's been not only he's been hustling at it for as long as he has but he studies the trends he knows how to grow he knows how to make it so one of the things that he did recently because he's always fucking doing he's like the Mr Beast of Twitch now that might be Ludwig oh, Ludwig's on YouTube now mm-hmm. You're neither here nor yeah there. wonder why <laughs> wonder why <laughs> all these people are on why. YouTube and and funny enough that's another person who has some some serious opinions on that but mm-hmm. regardless back to the ninja thing. Ninja started streaming on different services at the same time. It's actually, for what it's worth, it's it's pretty fucking impressive. TikTok. So he'll actually stream on six different services at the same time. He's not just wow. streaming onto Twitch. At the same time, he's streaming onto Facebook gaming. He's streaming onto YouTube TikTok. gaming. TikTok. All at once. He has mm-hmm. an iPhone that's also recording him at the same time, so he can stream to TikTok, and then he can stream to Instagram at the same time. So he's streaming mm-hmm. to all these different social media accounts at the same time, and the new terms of service shut that all down for him. They said, you cannot multi-stream anymore. And who could stop them? Like They so, can ban you from their services? So Ninja did a pretty uh, badass thing, and he's moving over to Kick. Which seems to be like uh, the new vibe. I've, I've never been, heard of Kick. What Ninja is, is a well, Kick is fucking old school. Kick yeah. is like the uh, basically the successor to Aim. Oh, yeah. Okay. So oh, like I after know that. Aim, Kick was like it, it was an I, a, instant messaging. That's what it was. It was okay. like what's is that it that but, same Kick? I think so. Is it not? Is this it one's Kick with K I C K. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. No, this is a this is different. I think actually. Uh, don't quote me on this because I don't know for sure, but I think this kick streaming service at the beginning of its lifespan, or at least at the beginning of when it started to take on, uh, you know, people started to realize who they were. I think it had like this, uh, what do you call it? This this kind of in- infamy for being like a Twitch stream service for, you know, alt right people. People who aren't yes. necessarily like it was. Yeah. It was for uh, people who got censored other places. Yeah. Let's yeah. say so. A lot of people like, who were canceled beliefs. or whatever were doing stuff on. Kick. It was the shadow realm. Exactly. So it's the reason I put it like that is because now it's completely one eighty, mm-hmm. yeah. and Flipping. now it's kind of just becoming a place for people who want to stream without having to feel like fucking Twitch is breathing down their back right. on everything. Okay. So, but the thing now is it's becoming like mixed with all these audiences because it's it's like. Okay, you're coming here for like some tiny rule that Twitch made, or you're coming here because like you're an alt right, like yeah, exactly. Oh. So y- y- there's like these mixed audiences now, where it's like Twitch is mostly like, all right, people are playing video games here. Where on Kick, it's not necessarily that. Yeah, that is the case. so you could you could either go from like, hey, what's up, guys? We're gonna get high and play this game, or. This is why Hitler was right. We're gonna play literally. Minecraft now. Pretty much, yeah, yeah literally. That's, that's pretty much <laughs> that. Yeah. Not even Minecraft, just just Hitler praise. Yeah, yeah. Not even, they, <laughs> just they're not even playing. And it just it's says just gameplay. Like, no, this flag. Oh background. no, Joey, there's more people just straight up just that, like talking. The gameplay is in the background in a no, tiny no area. At all, Joey. No, 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 just talking. Oh, no, no, legit. 
No actually. gameplay? That's crazy. There's no rules. Like, I could say I what I want here. Gameplay hear. would make it a little more watchable. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. For sure. I, like, imagine. You know, maybe I'd little, listen. I had, I, I had a little QB Minecraft Hitler just walking around. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> ben Shapiro comes out to debate him, but he's Steve. He's got, like, custom skins, bro. Oh, my God. Oh this my is God. awful, please. Tiny. But fucking, uh, and then leading on to the second wonderful, just juicy piece of Twitch drama concerning another face on that Rushmore of streamers, uh, Nick Merckx yeah. just got completely obliterated by numerous communities for a tweet that has divided the internet. Once again. <sighs> Look, to give some clarification, to give some context, uh, Nick Merckx, popular Twitch streamer, famous for playing just about any first-person shooter he can get his fucking hands on. Bang, bang, bang. Uh, really cool dude. Really popular guy on Twitch, known for being super community-oriented, has a die-hard community of fans that's appropriately named the M-Fam, and he takes great care of them, right? Mm-hmm. For what it's worth, obviously, I don't know him personally, but from everything that I've seen of him as a person on the internet... Seems to be a really fucking awesome guy. Yeah. Uh, okay. He so, seems like a if your average Joe. He's not he's sitting. Cool. He's not sitting. He's a stand up guy. Nick Merckx <laughs> is, a, is a home. <laughs> to give you like a real quick perspective before we get into the hell storm, uh, one thing that I think is really cool that he does is because of how much money he makes from streaming. Him and his wife set up like a foundation where he actually takes care of as many of his viewers and fans' pet health bills as he can. So Whoa. if their pets need mm-hmm. surgeries or stuff like that, you can apply and he'll put money towards that. He went, does is there like a bad process? He has to know if it's proof. Because what if someone would be like, "Oh, my rabbit's sick." Well, it's a fund, money. so it's like he puts the money there, and then if you can prove it or you really if need you it, prove that yeah, that you really or need you just, it. or he'll do it or he'll contact you. Yeah, like you but that's how tight knit his community is. Like so someone po- will post about it, and then he'll reach out to them. Like it's okay. important to note this guy has like thirty thousand viewers at a time sometimes, but this guy like knows a lot of his community, knows a lot of his fans. He does like annual barbecues where he meets them all face to face and stuff like that. He's big on that community aspect, right? Reason he got into trouble was because a video came out of the I think it was in Florida. It was uh, outside of a school. California. Was it California? Mm-hmm. It's outside of a school in we California. We can't blame Florida for everything. <laughs> it's very it's true. It's true. Let's just get into that. It's that or Ohio, right? Yeah. But fucking Florida's doing other stuff. There's a a, a viral video that <laughs> came busy. out of California of a bit of a scuffle that happened outside of a an, element, an elementary school uh, between LGBTQ protesters who were, you know, fighting for the, the you know, uh, I how do you phrase it? I guess the teaching, the teaching, or the 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 addition of LGBTQ literature or whatever into the curriculum of schools and shit like that with the alt right community with the Proud Boys and all that stuff. Nick saw the video and he made a tweet that literally said, "I'm I'm pretty sure I'm quoting this perfectly. Just leave the kids alone or something like that." All he said. It was all he needed to say. <laughs> yeah, because everybody jumped down this guy's throat. I think he said, yeah, they need to leave the children alone. That's the real issue. So people started to take it how they would. You know, I think one of the first things that that really added fuel to the fire here was that Call of Duty removed his operator pack from their game, which was huge. It, I think it came out like less than two months ago. They yeah, already took about it about a month ago. Yeah. Yeah. And they already took it off. It's like out. Uh, and then interestingly enough, I think like the next big thing to happen was Nick himself came out and spoke about it on stream. And not only did he not apologize for the tweet, he went further into detail what he was talking about and continued to defend himself. And I thought that what he said was really fucking awesome. And I really implore you to go watch it if you're really enveloped into this story. Uh, and like the main bullet points was one thing I really liked that he said was like, if the takeaway that you got from my tweet was that I don't like who you are based on your life choices. Yeah, that was a really, that's not the case. I love you, homie. That's literally like it. He also mentioned that he's a new father. He he had a baby like two months ago. And he just said, like, I have a very different perspective than I did like two, three months ago. Like I look at my son and that's like my world now. And both my wife and I saw that video and both agreed that it's not that we don't want this to be spoken about. It's just we want to be we want to be the ones to speak about this with our child, like when it's the time when we know our kid kind of thing. Right. Mm -hmm. So once he said that, a lot of people agreed. They took clarification on it. But Call of Duty is still yet to say anything or whatever. And then interestingly enough, today, Tim the Tatman, one of his closest friends, I think another face on that fucking Rushmore in solidarity, asked Call of Duty to take off his operator pack, which came out at the same time that Nick's did. And he was like, I just don't feel right with having mine up there with Nick's. Nick is my best friend, and I stand by him. 
So it's really interesting because, yeah. like, more often than not, these are op- op- these are. Op- I hate to say it, but they feel like opportunities to cancel people. And the yeah. fact that it feels like an opportunity is a sad thing because that's not what it should be. It should be like, you know, you fucked up or this or that. Even if they did fuck up, or in this case, I'm going to be flat out honest. I don't think Nick did anything wrong here. I think he, he was, was he was very brief on something political. Exactly. Yeah. And he's not a political guy. Yeah, exactly. and there was no explanation he, he, to he's, it. He's so. humble and like, he, I, you know, and especially when it comes to like twitter yeah you're making it on twitter that's what they're like that's really like not to blame nick but it's like you are you're making a tweet about this and it's also just like sad i mean it's nothing new but just yeah. the fact that like you should have known you were this was gonna yeah be the like outcome. he didn't deserve to get like what he and i'm also happy on the on that same note that there wasn't like uh like remember when like root like the nba canceled because of covid and then it was like a domino effect yeah where like that happened i'm happy that it didn't become like a thing where like nick lost all of his sponsors yeah or some shit like that because like i was domino effect. i yeah, was that afraid that because it really could have happened it yeah. could have if it was something where ruined, imagine yeah. if instead of being a humble guy he was like no fuck gay people like literally all of his shit would have just tanked exactly so I, speaking about humble, I remember like watching his apology video, and I was waiting for the typical responses of like, yeah, these are either pre-rehearsed or even like, I'm not sorry, I don't give a shit about. But he genuinely seems like a very humbling no, guy. No, like, that, that's and he kind of like all him. his responses, and I like what you said too. I I really felt him saying that like, I'm not. If you took that as I. I'm not approving of who you are. That is not the right way. That would have been and the tweet. Also, that was that would have like, been. Dude, the I'm tweet. like, bro, just by saying that you almost like saved yourself but like another thing that's important about nick is he's like he's kind of known on twitch for being the average joe that and that's Mm -hmm. not to say that he's not amazing but it's just like he he's not he's the guy he's not a big stellar guy he's a guy he's just the guy you know what i mean (laughs) and to further that i'd argue he's not like the brightest guy on the block yeah he he, he beefs that up a lot too he's kind of like the muscle head guy but he loves everybody he's like don't worry we're gonna get back out there team you know he's like that kind of dude so obviously what Dylan said about him not being a very political person, speaking on Twitter about a political issue, mixed with the fact that now the most extremist people in these groups will use anything that they can get to turn it into a headline against the other group is just, it's a great country, guys. We're yeah, fucking, we heard. we're nailing this shit, man. Oh, yeah. Shout out to our Indian viewers. Everybody has probably a strong have opinions, a great man. time watching this comedy podcast, hearing what's going on over <laughs> here. And we appreciate crazy, man. <laughs> <laughs> if I may continue. Yeah. I had a great weekend. I had a fun yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to pretend like I haven't seen Jerry three days in a row. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> correct, uh, correct. Friday, Jerry, Jose, and I hung out here. We had a we had a chill time. I don't even yeah. oh, we were watching the NBA finals. That's right. Nice. We were hanging Very out, nice. oh, watching forward. watching the Heat lose because you know of course, of course. <laughs> great great stuff they got the one win i said they were i said yeah nuggets in he five. did say that I said nuggets in five he did so say we'll that. see we'll see but uh regardless we were hanging out uh jerry called the zuri went home first of all our boy jose has the worst sleep schedule i think i've ever yeah. seen <laughs> yeah. I think this guy's, like he sleeps in like three hour increments it's insane like i don't understand it but regardless He's a cat, honestly. like jose comes to our houses now to sleep <laughs> yeah, he literally he came does. and slept like through the finals He's like, like, like yo i'm gonna take a nap he literally word for word yo i'm gonna take a nap when the game's over say oklahoma and he knocks out. <laughs> and then he woke up before I had the opportunity to say it. I was like, motherfucker, I was ready. I'm fucking ready. I was ready. <laughs> so anyways, it gets to the point where Jerry gets up and goes. And Jose's like, bro, I'm fucking tired. He's like, you know what? I think this is going to be one of the rare occasions I stay over. Oh, I thought he was going to just nap right there. <laughs> you again. know what? I was like, <laughs> I'm you know what? I'm, I'm a snooze. <laughs> He's so Jose, so he announces it. So yeah. I'm like, all right, bet. And it's funny because my mom says it all the time. She's like, every time Jose's here mad late, she's like, why does he leave at like two in the morning? Just open the bed. Because the, the sofa here turns into a bed. He's like, just yeah, open right. it. Mm-hmm. I'm sure here. So I, I set it up for him. And then he was like, yo, but I kind of want to get snacks. Trying to get snacks, and I'm just kind of at this point where I'm like, I don't even want snacks, but I'm just like, you want adventure, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I'm yeah, like, you know, you know what time it is, you know who you're talking to, you know who yeah, asked that. Let's yeah. go. We're gonna see some so crazy I'm shit. Like, Fuck it, let's go. So we we go to his car. First, I left in like a t-shirt and sweatpants. It's like middle of the night. It's like yeah. 60 degrees out. I'm freezing, and I'm like, this is not the best decision. But we get in the car and we drive to the 7-Eleven on Metropolitan by yeah. Cinemar over there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we go in and Jose's getting his snacks. I'm getting my snacks. There are two guys in the front. 
one of the guys is this big black dude and immediately what i notice about this guy and i love about this guy he is smoking a blunt inside of the 7-eleven <laughs> it's in his hands it's on fire it's, and it's fucking, in the and, it's in, and he's just fucking shooting this shit and whatever Jose mentioned this after. I didn't hear it, but Jose said that while we were there, he heard that guy say to the other dude, yo, let's get back to the studio, my man. And then the other guy was like, word, I got beans, pills, right? Mm -hmm. So whatever. We're like, word, whatever, da, da, da. Um, but this is this is in Forest Hills. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I just so, want to I want to get the, exactly get, get the setting <laughs> at, correct at two thirty in the morning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. So we get our snacks. We go out as we're leaving. The big guy he holds the door for us. So Jose's like, "Thanks, homie," and I'm like, "Thanks, bro." And he's like, "For sure, homies, get home safe." And then he's like, "Yo, can I read the boss on YouTube and Spotify? <laughs> oh, no. Look, look it up, like my man. Look it up." <laughs> He's like, for real, ain't gonna, ain't gonna, I promise you, man, ain't gonna steal you wrong. And I'm like, word, <laughs> let's man. go. So in typical Bobby Jose fashion, we got in that car, <laughs> went on to Spotify. Canary's pretty fucking good. <laughs> Canary <laughs> makes some good music. Jerry heard a song. It's, the last, it's, the I hear, you, it's really I well produced. Hear. The guy knows how to rhyme pretty well. It's kind of like uh, I don't know what's how would you describe like melodic rap? You know, kind of like yeah. to the to the song. I don't know. You'll hear it. When yeah, you yeah, yeah, play it. Chill, play you know, it. Dylan will be able to pick to exactly. Oh, that me. is this. But I, I found it funny because then like. He plays the one song by him. We're just driving, and then, you know, parking around here is terrible. So Mm -hmm. it took us, like, 15 minutes to find parking. We didn't even realize by the end of it, we had practically listened to this guy's entire discography. We had listened to, like, seven or eight fucking Canary the the Boss songs songs. in a row. So fucking shout-outs to Canary. Your your music's pretty (laughs) good. Jose saved your music. And if you ever make it, I was the guy in (laughs) 7-Eleven. So that was really funny for me. And then that allows me to lead into my next thing, which is even funnier to me. Bro, I'm 7-11. telling you, when Jose comes over, we have just a great time, right? It's not 7-Eleven. It's not 7-Eleven. This oh, is after. Oh, oh, okay. Get back home. We sleep. This is the next morning. Uh, Jose, I'm literally like us. Like I'm in that process where like I'm awake, but I'm like waking up and my door just opens and he's like, yo. And I'm like, yeah. And he's like, I was awake for a while. I was watching some videos of some cops shooting people. <laughs> <laughs> Very Jose I was taking a nap for two hours. And then I got up again and watched some more videos of more people getting shot. And, and now I just couldn't go to bed. And I was like, yeah. I, I wonder bed. why. And then, I'm like, and then I'm like, yeah, I'm awake now. So then I wake up. I'm like, I put on. First of all, I sleep naked. So I have to like shuffle my pants on under. I'm kind of like, like, you fucking leave, bro. Like, yeah. <laughs> He's standing there waiting for you. So and then I get up out of bed. I, I make the bed or whatever. I don't know why. I don't know why. And I don't Tell know how it started. What? I think to make this funnier, I'll actually wow. track it. But wow. we started watching YouTube videos, right? Normal. Right. Pretty normal. Pretty normal at first. And one of the videos that we started watching, here we go, was, oh, in typical Jose fashion, Jose was showing me some F1 highlights. Right? Indeed. Cool. For whatever reason, one of the suggested videos on the F1 highlights was a dodgeball tournament with trampolines and everything. Oh, I've seen seen those. So Jose and I started watching that. This led into me and Jose watching about nine or ten different sports videos in the most bizarre sports you've ever... And actually being seriously invested <laughs> in it. Okay? So in one day, in about five hours... I imagine this. The we, fuck? Where the fuck was the invite, bro? <laughs> we, watched, bro. we watched F1. Okay. We watched uh, the quarterfinals of the Sky Zone Ultimate Dodgeball Tournament. Oh, okay. Did we you watch, watch, did you watch any blitz ball, like wiffle ball? No. We oh. watched Thailand versus Brazil in tech ball, which okay. is a combination of soccer, ping pong, and volleyball. Nice. Wow. <laughs> Insane. We watched... Uh, the Ifmar ISTC World Champion A Main Leg One RC Race Car Championships. Nice. We watched the 2019 Disc Golf World Championship. Okay, that's Disc pretty hype. I've seen that. We I've watched that the European Championship Artistic Final Three Cushion Carom Billiards Tournament. Okay. Then we watched Mega Levanche 2021, which is a giant bike race where you start at the top of a hill in France of a mountain. I've seen oh, I've seen that one. Yep, yep. that's sick. All yeah. the all the the GoPro like Wild. mountain bike ones I get recommended. Then we watched uh, the Tour de France. Nice. Then we started watching Kipchoge uh, complete a marathon in under two hours for the first time, and uh, that was almost the extent of everything we watched. But I left one out in particular. Left one out because it had to be. 
and I'm gonna I'm gonna joke around about this. All right. But it has to be one of the most entertaining and fun fucking things I've ever seen on YouTube. And I'm mad I didn't know about this before. Okay. So I want to give a big shout out to Gels Marble Runs. Oh my Never, God! You don't what? know. You don't know yeah. the marble races. I love the marble races. So we found a suggested video from 2019. Yes. Ooh. It was called like the Marble Olympics. Yeah, I know this. Yes, and I've it, seen this. It has like 14 million views. Very mm-hmm. big, popular video. In this video, it's a set of marbles of different colors doing different Olympic events, like racing down a, a, a path or pushing a block as far as they can, sh- shit like that, right? And the way that they set it up is there's graphics that are incredible that track all of the yeah. progress. They track the world record line and shit. They, they, you know, the, the, all of the different marble team names, they have fucking team names and colors and shit like that. But they make, like, lore so yeah, as the, the comment lines. as the commentator is like talking about these marble olympics he's like yeah the limers don't like the chocolatiers oh and there's a fight in the stands and in the stands there's like all these brown marbles and all these green marbles and they're intermixing with each other and fighting <laughs> there's like one part where there's like a there's like a weird error in one of the games and the coaches of the marbles which are all they're all marble yeah they're, yeah, 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 they're yeah, just yeah. like they start hitting each other and they're like oh and the coaches are having a fight it's like some shit straight out of spongebob <laughs> that's but it is funny. so fucking well done yeah it, it, the production value it's done is 10 out of stupid 10. Yeah. it's so stupid so we saw this video from 2019 and immediately we're like what the fuck is this guy doing now so we fast forward he's doing right now he's doing something called marble rally it's outside it's like a whole dirt fucking thing it's insane <laughs> yeah. but one that jose and i started watching and i wanted to give it a big shout out go watch some marbula one racing <laughs> It is, it is set up exactly like Formula, Formula One, one but with marbles. They get like 16 marbles. They start them out at the beginning. It's this... They Not only do they make the track, they put this shit in like a Venice, like a small, like beautiful city and shit like that. <laughs> and then they have them do like 16 laps and they track it all. If yeah. one gets overtaken, oh the God. thing changes. They show mm-hmm. the timings. You you could bet on it. It's fucking on marbles? insane. That's insane. It's insane. Yeah. And there's lore. Remember, there's lore. yeah the storyline. Last year, this guy won. So yeah, no, this marble and this is just a win. marble. That yeah, sounds like a marble. SpongeBob yeah. shit. Like, take it away, Penny. And, and this is Penny. Penny. And the stats. It's like, yeah, oh, yeah. six months ago they did this. There's a crash. <laughs> Let's cut back to that crash from last season's race. And it's just like a marble <laughs> flying <laughs> off the track. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like the snail racing. <laughs> it's the dumb. Like, and when I say it's the dumbest shit, it's the best shit in the world. It's amazing. Truthfully. Like, I well, can't. I want to watch some of this. They made a game on Twitch now, or not? Not on, but you can stream it. Yeah. And it's marble racing, and it's mm-hmm. based off of Gems mm-hmm. Marble Racing. Yeah, fucking, fucking legend. Awesome, man. Yeah. Jeez. Can I can I talk about what I've been watching? Of course. Yeah. So uh, I'm a little mad about uh, the podcast sphere in like other medias. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. So like I like you said before, we were talking about ideas we had for the podcast, right? With like uh, we want to be on more social media platforms, and I said how Facebook is the most common. I looked this up because my Facebook reels are only podcasts Hmm. and they're only the most specific side podcasts ever. It's like full sends, most specific one. It's like farm podcasts. I have three different farm podcasts. I got Mm -hmm. one of those on Facebook. And I had to. It was like two guys. They were like, what would you rather get? One of these, one of these. Would you rather have 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 a hog barn or a hundred acres? Yeah, literally. (laughs) There's farming with us. There's farm boys. There's farm time. I had to like go into not interested. That's mad annoying if they like go into your settings like and shit. Like, yeah, that'd be mm-hmm. a farm. That's exactly. farm. Exactly. There probably is playing. farm. And after all of these, and some of them I like. You have like your mom's house and like yeah. the impractical joker guys and shit. It's like funny people, you know. They think I'm really Italian. I think it's based on like my old likes. Like it's like <laughs> yeah, yeah, like the all uh, Chris the Stefanos like podcast. The yeah, yeah, you must yeah, like yeah, this yeah, guy. Yeah, yeah. Eh? The busting with the boys. <laughs> Fuck out of yeah. <laughs> But I think the most, my least favorite podcast that exists, it is uh, the new uh, motivational investment guru who is, uh, and you might not know who it is, but it is the uh, former host of Ridiculousness, Rob Deerdeck. What? Who yeah. now he? Ha- it's like it's like like imagine Jordan Peterson. Yeah. But Rob Deerdeck. And it's business. It's like it's it's life success. Oh man. It's like reaching your goals motivational speaking guys guys it's real simple okay 
You get a big black friend, yeah. and you just skate around all the time. Yeah. You <laughs> skate around, Which, and he'll protect you. Yeah. Get a mini horse. And his shtick, I, and I think I think we should do this. I want to like branch off and do like other side podcasts. I know we don't have the fucking time for it, but it's like me and Jerry should have like the Rise and Grind podcast. Like we're like <laughs> investing. It's getting women. It's like it's like all of that shit. It's like yeah, uh, stock market, Bitcoin. <laughs> All of that. I feel like that would really do well. I'll produce the uh, shit out you of You guys could have like a like a superhero only one where you guys are I, in I character. I've ever heard an idea that would make where you're Jose the, run back faster. You're, you're the superhero. Uh huh. And like the super no me and me and Jer, me and Joe me and uh, Jose, we're political. Uh-huh. We're the political podcast. Yeah, gotcha. yeah, and we're like we're like two sides, but we come to the same agreement. Yeah, it's but like, Rob Deerdeck, his shtick is he will talk about the most generic normal thing in life and pretend it's like a life hack. Yeah. Like it's like the new thing that you must do. Like he'll just sit there with the microphone. You put water in the fridge. It gets cold. <laughs> yeah, but he does it in like a super like monotone voice, like this. And it's like there's like this like rising grind core. I call it. It's like motivational music, but it's at like a really low volume. Like that guy we <laughs> know, and it right? gradually gets louder. Yeah, L- literally. And he'll just be talking about something. He's like, what you need to do is every day you're able to eat the same thing: chicken teriyaki, <laughs> chicken teriyaki. vegetables. You prepare this in Tupperware, and that will set you up for success. Meal planning? <laughs> yeah, but literally. He will talk about meal planning, and I'm like, yeah, this is what's really going to help me. He's like, if you can eat the same thing, and you know what that does, that 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 perseverance, that gives you freedom. You could go home. You could no, have dinner with your wife. Subscribe to my package. Yeah. $15 a month. And, and, and it, it is. You can own a it, factory of your fantasies. It is, yeah, and that's that's. I think I think that's what really makes me angry about it is that it's a complete one eighty career flip. Yeah, because he's it, known as being the big this, wacky. Fucking... This is the wacky dude that actually had twelve plus years of having shows where he would just do whatever the fuck he wants yeah. with his friends. Yeah, and now he is the fucking preserve. Uh. He's like he's like Andrew Tate, but like respects woman you know yeah, what like I mean? When it's a real estate, like it makes yeah, no or fun. yeah, he 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 decided to be like. Now I'm an adult. Yeah. Let me get out of Mark, this. Now I'm an adult. Mark Wahlberg. No more backwards shorter. hats. I think that's it. It's like, it's very like, right. Like he had one where it's like the, the most less, stereo. Less hate crimes. Yeah. The most. <laughs> only a bit less. The most stereotypical one where he's like, a friend of mine told me that you have to wake up at 6 a.m. But I started waking up at 5 a.m. Then you start doing the math on that. That's seven extra hours a week. I think that's, I've seen that's this. That's 28 extra hours a month which like the, the math right away doesn't it never it's never smart but like it, and he's like think of how many hours that's extra time and i'm like does he realize where it's like yeah but then you have to go to bed an hour fucking yeah. earlier you don't make you don't get any extra I fucking gained time. extra time I, I i i fucking hacked the system and then again he already has the money and a lot of times he just flexes about having money yeah, he's like word. i know i don't have to do this or i have to do that because there's an algorithm that will make my money grow more. And I'm like, shut the fuck up. <laughs> really? So enemy of the podcast is now... Rob Deerdeck. Is Rob Deerdeck. I'm, I'm with it. I'm with, yeah, I'm, with I'm, it. I'm, I'm with <laughs> can, we, can we all agree that like you brought off... He was like, skate around my big friend. That was his gimmick, right? Because that's how I knew him. Oh, Rob and, and uh, his... Big. big. Yeah, big. Yeah, and then they had the show. Who's and then the even other after enemy that. of the podcast? He's a sports player. It's fucking... It's Rob Deerdeck and that guy who lost you that money. Oh, Carl Anthony Towns. Carl Anthony Towns. He's going to end up He's gonna end up on the Knicks and I'm going to be mad. You're on the list right there. The Put him on the list. Bam, bam. Yeah. It's like, the funny I, like, boys. I like how all of like the people that are on like the bad list are like just rich people I don't like. Yeah. And all the people <laughs> that watch our show are, are Our like, dictators <laughs> <laughs> the world. Uh, yeah, shout out uh, rest in peace to the Unabomber by the way uh, yeah. K- uh, Kaczynski was a big fan yeah, he, uh, <laughs> they gave him a tablet and he was he, a big time watcher uh, yeah, he, he, uh, we, he wanted the write in we were like please don't please don't write in <laughs> you, know that mother- you know that motherfucker got fucking 100% on all of our segments he's that like, motherfucker's smart he's like, he's like can I send you a gift no we do not send us a <laughs> no, gift no 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 no, no. no I, got, I actually got a letter his last wish was he wanted one more factor fake but yeah. we just we ran out of time we were able to make it happen for him <laughs> Catch us next week for the Unabomber Factor fake, by the way. Oh, Real man. quick, uh, just, it, this is a, kind of a good segue because. No, at, it's not. No, <laughs> no, not the, the Unabomber, Unabomber thing. Yeah. The fact that we were talking about your fucking podcast. Yeah. Because right? you were talking about like side podcasts yeah. and shit. And I, w- one idea that I had had a while ago for like a side podcast was like a 30 minute ish podcast, audio only. 
called Jerry Watches Movies. Yes. <laughs> Jerry finally watches movies, and we just ask him questions. Bro, like, I have so yet to watch fucking... The Nice Guys. Man. You see, like, Jerry watches no <laughs> movies. I don't know that movie either. So it's Apparently, it's a good movie. Oh, it's a great That's movie. all I've heard. But fucking, uh, I was just going to swing it into uh, something that I was also studying that or reading about that I thought was really cool. Uh, t- speaking about niche podcasts, have you ever heard of a podcast called The Worst Idea of All Time? I know mm. about it because Bobby told me about it, mm. and I uh, read the wiki. And... Yeah, it's a fun one. So yeah. it actually got really popular a few years back when uh, they did season one. It started, in, yeah, this is how I remember it. This is about to throw you back. Ready? I actually don't remember the name of it, but you remember there was like an app? You remember Nine Gag? Yeah. yeah. There was iFunny too. Yeah. iFunny, that was me. So Nine Gag yeah. had another one that was called like Eight Fact. I knew yeah. about that. It was a And fun I had person. Eight Fact. So when I was a senior in high school, I got an eight fact that basically said that, did you know that there's a podcast that exists where the two people who host it watch the movie Grown Ups 2 every week for a full year <laughs> and talk about new meanings they discover <laughs> in the movie, okay? Like not deep movies. This podcast has been going on for multiple years and this is all that they do. And it's kind of fucking awesome. <laughs> so they switch movies, yeah. but after 52 weeks. So season mm. one, they every week they watched Grown Ups two. The reason they did so is because they had never watched Grown Ups one, which I find even funnier. <laughs> <laughs> which is like better. It's a better movie. And to put, give perspective, these are two Australian comedians. I think like or New Zealand. Just point is, you know, that the second one was they watched Sex in the City two every week for a year and talked about that. Yeah. Uh, the third one was they watched We Are Your Friends, the Zac Efron DJ movie, every week for a year. <laughs> Uh, in the fourth season, they finally go back, and every day for every week for a year, they watch Sex in the City one. Yeah, uh, that sounds torturous. During the pandemic, <laughs> right. the hosts watched Home Alone three every three days to produce a <laughs> no. nine episode season. <laughs> no, <laughs> season that's, five. That's in a month. That's crazy. Uh, for season five, instead of rewatching the same movie every week, they watch a different movie from the same film series. This series they pick for the fifth season was a French American Emmanuel series of softcore pornography. <laughs> uh, and then the the current season, uh, like the current thing that they're in, is uh, in season six right now. They're watching all of the Fast and Furious movies in reverse order, the amount of times equal to that film's position <laughs> no in the sequence. Way. So they're watching Fast and the Furious nine nine, nine times. times. Then they're gonna watch yeah. eight eight times seven all the way down. So these guys just do fucking awesome shit. Are these guys okay? <laughs> no, probably. They, uh, they are doing the number one rule of comedy, which is committing. Yeah. Uh, they No, because I'm imagining what their calendar the looks day. like. Alright, today's Monday, which means we need to watch Home Alone 3, and then on Tuesday, we need to watch uh, Good Will Hunting, and then on f- Wednesday... We gotta watch Home Alone 3. <laughs> three times, but we can't forget to watch this movie seven times. Oh my god. Their calendar must look crazy Painful. of how many movies they're on track on. You have to be able to recite the whole movie by that point. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think it's more because, like, that's true Like, commitment. back and forth with each other. Yeah, because it's like you could just make a sketch where you did that. But no, they did it, and it's their whole thing. It's their right. career. Yeah, yeah, it's literally Wild. why they make money, is they watch the same movie, and then they... Cause the, and that, but that's, <laughs> They have and, to have been accustomed to that. Well, no, now. and it's like, the, right, this it's is the what I'm true do. creative like improv process, because it's like you can't joke about the movie anymore. Yeah. You're at, you, you, you're you, at your you, point where you you're You have pulled the apart movie. every line from Grown Ups 2. It's like Chris Rock has made that joke every time, and I haven't laughed every time. You you get you start to feel like the actors. Yeah, yeah, you're like, yeah, all right, I'm like, getting why they said that all in I'm this way. This is we need to watch Grown Ups too. Yeah, we sh- I, I, I haven't watched need... Grown Ups one or two. It's one. one, is <laughs> one. Is I like one. Like one is I like pretty one. good. And two is not as good, but it's fun. It's a fun. Yeah, movie. two it's, is it, fun. The ending is pretty fucking stupid, but the rest of it is alright. I think I watched bits and pieces actually. Fucking. Uh, the, yeah, the, we're gonna fun. watch. Uh, what is it? Uh, that's bench warmers. That's my boy. Bench warmers every week. Bus. But shout out to that. I thought that was a tremendous idea for a podcast. It is. Also, one last topic to squeeze in there for a minute or two. Uh, yeah, the world was going to shit in New York City. I kind of find it funny that we forgot to mention that. Uh, I actually forgot it happened. <laughs> yeah, I, that's that's kind of us, though. I mean, like, uh, my first impression. Like, I understand it was like, you know, the sky was fucking orange and shit. But, yeah. I, like, I feel but like... Spider-Verse also came out. Yes. Yeah, it <laughs> Well, like, I just feel like... 
there was like news about this. Like I heard about this shit for like a week that like the forest fires were gonna cause a cloud of smoke to come over the city, and then it you happened. Heard about this? Yeah, it was on the news for like four days. It's fuck? just that people didn't know that it was gonna be that orange. But like mm-hmm. it was on the it was all over the news. So I they, also what? knew about it. I just didn't exactly know what to expect in terms of like seeing it and smelling yeah. it. Like I just I guess I what I right. expected in my head was it was gonna be really overcast, which it was. But it was also orange right. and like smelt like fire for yeah. two days, which mm-hmm. was awesome. I'm not going to lie. It was really cool. My so cousins was- were shitting on me, man. My cousins were like, oh, we're over here in sunny Florida. And, I, and they were sending we're over a bunch- here in Florida. Everything's <laughs> great over yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. Also, it's funny. <laughs> Fuck you, New York City. And also, my funniest thing was the people that were like 100 miles away and they were like, oh, haha. Like, bitch, where is it traveling? It's a fucking cloud. It's going. It's going. Where do you think? <laughs> like, my friend, I literally had a friend in Philly, like, oh, haha. I'm like, get fucking ready, bitch. <laughs> yeah. Like, get fucking prepared to get fucking rocked by this cloud. Also, like, I was mad because I have asthma. I couldn't even go fucking outside. Yo, it was bad. Yeah, it was oh, yeah. so bad. Like, I look like the water. I go outside, like, <laughs> I work out outside. I was getting tired way faster than I normally would. No, like for those who weren't here or saw any videos of it, to be in the dust of cloud, it was like all orange. I had to send my students home wearing masks. I was walking home with a mask and it was just orange. Everyone got sent home. Like yeah. work stopped. And I was you could joking see, like the little like, particles flying around and shit. Yeah, I was joking around. I was like, oh, I smoke weed. I'm fine. I got this shit. <laughs> and like even just the walks to like the train, I was like significantly out of breath by the time. I was like, yeah. this is Their dry just, mouth very walking. fast. Like, what the fuck? Yeah, word. Yeah, I was getting It headaches. was literally like, I'm exaggerating, but, as a but it was like hell. <laughs> Slash cinematographer. I thought that shit was sick. It did look cool. Like, it, it looked cool. It looked cool. I'm not going to lie. I'm also just kind of, granted, I'm not going to be an idiot and be like, oh, it was so cool. It was so cool that all those old people had to go to the hospital. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it is kind of interesting to live through shit like that and be able to see it and experience, and experience it. it. Like, yeah, yeah. We, we all experienced this kind like, of I have, like, bugged little, out moment. Like, you know, I have frames on my computer, my favorite movies. I have like frames in my head of shit that I've seen in real life that I like always stay with me. And like, I do that because I want to try to recreate them someday with the camera but that will be one of them is um the one the movie that ryan reynolds is in isn't there a scene where it's all orange i made a po- meme post about it oh you're talking ryan gosling there we uh, go blade runner 2049 that one yeah, everybody was saying it looked like that or that one uh, scene where he's Breaking in the, the dust <laughs> yeah i saw a lot of sepia jokes but anyway, we made it through. We survived. Joystick's still here. Don't can't worry. wait. Can't wait until like it's a like a monthly thing because like forest fires go up. Yeah. So it's like oh, yeah, yeah. it's gonna be a monthly thing now. We're like, oh, put your mask on. Everyone, right, it's getting orange. <laughs> also, thanks Canada. Fuck you. But it's tapping jam and jam of the week. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Baba jamba jamba. Cool. Ooh, I'm gonna go first. Oh, go, Jerry. Shit. Uh, wow. My bam of the week is the the new song by Baby Keem and Kendrick. Uh, the hillbillies because the music video is funny. funny. <laughs> it's, it's really funny. It's a good song too. Yeah, they're just like chilling, just like vibing. I saw everywhere. all the comments were like, "It's nice to see Kendrick have fun." Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> they're just like fucking dancing in place. Well, oh, that's that's like that's his outlet. I feel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's where he gets it out when he doesn't have to like you know hold up a, a, a group of people. <laughs> like we will make it through this. He's like, "Did you hear? This is my cousin. This is my cousin. <laughs> now we're now we're gonna rap about sex and all this stuff." <laughs> Fucking, uh, 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 <laughs> we should just cut out every time Joey talks and just put that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> not nah, fucking real quick. My jam of the week goes to a old Brockhampton song from there. Well, not old. It was from the Roadrunner album, but it's called Old News featuring Byard Baird. Pretty fire. Pretty I'll cool. go next because my slam is kind of like a joke. I just heard it like once this week. Uh, Toxicity from by System of a Down. <laughs> And the reason I chose it is because I saw this really funny meme of this. Uh, it was Plankton, but voiced with an AI of Hugh singing the song. And it sounds like Plankton from SpongeBob singing that song. It's incredible. The song is a jam, too. And it's a very it good is. song. My Yam of the Week is uh, Be Like Me by Gum. Uh, Hyper popish kind of. A lot of his songs are kind of like an acoustic song. And then by the end of it, you're like, that wasn't an acoustic song. Uh, there's a lot of that in the like hyper pop, but I feel like people are just getting bored. And they're just like, you know, molding, you know, four, mm. five, 29 genres together. That's usually how it goes. Yeah. Good stuff. Fire. Yeah. Well, thanks for uh, chilling on with us. Chilling on with what the Chilling fuck, on? Man, I don't you want to chill on? on? Let's chill on some more. I'm not good at this. Yeah. I'm good at the middle part. Bob, Bob, I'm, I'm, start I'm looking at my watch right now, and it's like, skin it's 30. Like, we're, running, we're running pretty, you know. 
we're you know finish the sentence we're running we're running and running running, <laughs> running, running. <laughs> thanks for watching the joystick show episode 145 like i mentioned at the beginning of the episode it'd be a big help if you could uh if you could subscribe to the youtube channel it'd be nice you could, uh, go ahead and if you could like the video episode 145 get ready because in five one. episodes it'll be 150 50. two episodes after that 152 will be the three-year anniversary of this fucking stupid show we've been doing Ooh, do, do. And uh, we got lots of new fun stuff to show you. Potentially uh, new guests, new set, new shit, like actual shit yeah. will be on the table every episode. We're going to take a shit every week and review it. Yeah. <laughs> I think we found our, yeah. our idea. I think that's, yeah, our the target audience. Cast. I think they it has like to be that. a different shit. It can't be the same shit every yeah. week. We can't do that. That's too much commitment. Same, same, uh, new week, same shit. Same, no, we got a new shit, different toilet. Same, 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 same <laughs> that's awful. I don't want to be part of this. No, we got to just keep the shit on the table in place of the camera, yeah. <laughs> the candle, the candle, yeah, and just different and smell. It same shit, different day, bro. Exactly. Oh, it's the same shit. <laughs> <laughs> I know we lost you already, uh, but you know. I mean, can we, can we get on Amazon right now? Buy the shit candle. I mean, I feel like that's already that's the a shandle. thing that. <laughs> Thanks for watching. That's horrible. <laughs>